Hey guys, it's Ron again over at multifamilycoach.com. So, hey, another video. I haven't done a video in a month or two and I did two, two in a row. So the reason I'm doing today's video is because of the video I did yesterday, or if I post this today, but uh, the prior video I did, how's that? So that was on how I show my vacancies. I'm sorry, I'm driving, I'm just leaving my office. So how I show my vacancies, I batch show them, I went through that process in my prior video and the letter I used and, and you know, some landlords would call that lazy. I call it efficient, you know, tomato, tomato. Um, so somebody asked me, hey, Ron, you know, uh, I know you did a video prior on the holding deposit. You know, I can't find it. Would you mind doing that again? So, okay. So here's how I do my holding deposits. And for those of you who have seen a prior video on this subject, sorry, um, you can see it again. So I do things differently. And, and, and what I mean by that is traditionally, you know, people, they get, uh, people come see their apartment, he'll take an application, you know, maybe you charge an app fee, maybe you don't. Um, I do not, by the way. Um, so, and then everybody leaves, and you got a stack of apps, you process, you know, the first one, you go through it, da, 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 da. You know, sometimes that'll take a day or two, you gotta verify their income, check their credit, which I do not do, um, and I'll explain that. And, and then three days later, you call the person back. Hey, you saw my, you know, my apartment at 123 Main Street, uh, hey, congratulations, the place is yours, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. When can you come in to sign a lease? Oh, oh yeah, I remember that place. Yeah, no, we already found something different. Oh, now you gotta start the process again. So the problem is you may have stopped your search thinking that you found your tenant, but I promise you this, they haven't stopped their search looking for an apartment. So it's a race to get to that qualified tenant first. So I have some basic criteria I have to meet on my tenants. So uh, with almost 100 tenants over 10 years, you know, I've been doing this 10 years and, and 92 units. So we're talking a lot of tenants. I've had two evictions. That's it. That surprises a lot of people. Now, that being said, I've done cash for keys dozen, dozen times, you know, so it's not all a bed of roses, by the way. And there's certainly some luck built into that. So that being said though, my process works for me, but here's what I do. Once I, I have some basic criteria that have to be met. So, and that is a couple of things. Number one, full-time job at least a year. And I say full-time job, permanent job. So, because what you'll get is, oh yeah, I've been working, you know, at XYZ Bakery for two years. Turns out it's a temp agency. So full-time permanent job, that they've been at at least a year making three times the rent. So if rent is a thousand, they have to gross before taxes, 3000 end of discussion. Cause that means they can afford the rent. The only exception to that is they pull into the building in a, in a brand new BMW seven series. That's 1800 bucks a month, you know, but you know, normally if they're, if they're grossing three times uh, pay versus rent, they're fine. And that's the same ratio a bank uses. We all got into trouble when everybody started deviating from that ratio. So it's ratio. And the other thing I really care about is an eviction history. I don't want to see any prior evictions and I will check, you know, so as long as those basic tenants are met, they can become tenants. Now what's missing out of that is, uh, your notice a, a credit check. I don't check credit. Never have, by the way, number one, it's not a good barometer of a good person. My credit is so, so it's not horrible, but you know, in a vacuum, looking at my credit on, on a spreadsheet, it's not terrific. I owe millions, you know, so that's going to hurt my credit and I don't have a job, you know, so on paper, I probably wouldn't rent to myself if I was that stringent. The other reason I don't check credit is I believe that actually costs me money and here's why. So in the neighborhoods I service, the C to C minus neighborhoods, mainly C, um, you know, good, clean, safe, affordable housing to working people. Um, if I check credit and we're stringent about that, plus evictions, plus pay and all that, at some point I'm weeding out most of my potential customers. And and, and a lot of landlords are probably screaming at the, the screen right now going, but I don't want, you know, I'd rather have it sit empty than have a deadbeat. And I agree with that. However, over a hundred units, if I was that stringent, my vacancy rate would skyrocket and that cost me actual money. It actually serves me better to get good people in there that may not have great credit. And occasionally if I have to do a cash for keys once every year because of that, that that is financially better for me over the long term to keep my vacancy down to effectively zero the way I structure my lease. So here's what I do. And this this preamble's kind of dragging on here. So so once I show my units and they meet that basic criteria and they can prove it to me. I'm gonna to wanna to see pay stubs and all that. I don't, I don't do handshakes. 
But what I will do is I'll do a holding deposit. You like the apartment? You meet my, my criteria? I like you? Let's do this. You need to give me $400 right now and the place is yours pending approval and verification of your paperwork, okay? So, and that is a holding form. Now, I'm trying to hold it up while I drive here. So I've been doing this for years. I never understood why more people don't do this. And it's got all the legal mumbo jumbo in there. They sign it, they initial it. Um, they have X amount of days to sign my lease. Um, so it's all contingent upon verification. Uh, once I approve you, it's non-refundable. So that $400 is gone, but as long as you don't flake out on I me mean, you're not lying to me, it applies towards your security deposit. So that 400 is not wasted money, not at all. But that says to you, I want this apartment and I'm prepared to put money down. So now I'll process all their paperwork. So, but now we're gonna do it on my terms because they have money on the line. So when I ask for something, they're gonna do it right away. When you do that and nobody has any money on the line, you know, what ends up happening is it gets drug out, but while it gets drug out, they're looking for other places. And so what ends up happening is your first two or three people, you, you gotta go three deep to get your tenant. And then meanwhile, you might have missed the next months because they have to give 30 days notice to their landlord to move. So at the end of the day, that's why people have these five, six percent vacancy rates. Uh -uh. I rent it quick to the first qualified person and emphasis on the qualified, okay? So I'm not bypassing anything, I'm speeding it up. So you like the place, I like you, give me money. Okay, so a holding farm. Most landlords don't use them. I do and I have for years and, and I've been lucky, I admit that. But basically it rocks and rolls for me. So I'm done, no more bunch of apps everywhere and all that. I find it to be much easier. So give it a shot guys. All my students get access to all this stuff. This was written by my lawyers, okay? Um, and I won't try to read it to you. I can try to pull over and some of the highlights, but it says, and they initial it and it's in bold and underline that, you know, it's non-refundable, you know, because they can't say, oh, I didn't know that. You know, it's plain English. So guys, check it out. See if that works for you, you know, let the buyer beware, use your own processes, but that's what works for me. And it works really well, by the way. And it has for years, so, you know, I'll continue doing what works for me. So, hey guys, you know the commercial part of these videos, right? Uh, if you or anybody you know is tired of the rat race, if you're sitting in a cubicle watching this video and there's fluorescent light, you know, and you're in an uncomfortable chair making $38,000 a year for a boss you can't freaking stand. You get one week's vacation. You dread every Monday morning your alarm clock going off. Guess what? That was me. Um, not anymore. You know, number one, I'm lazy and I admit it. I got tired of working for somebody I didn't like and making them rich and trading dollars for hours. So I decided there's got to be a better way. And a better way is quite simply when a lot of people get together on the first of the month to give you a third of their paycheck. Ta da! And guess what? About half the units my wife and I own, I acquired, we acquired, without using a bank. That's it. No credit check, no W 2, no tax return, no three months, no points, no appraisal, no inspection. I close in three days. I just need time for my lawyer, and yes, there's lawyers involved, um, to do a title search. That's it. You know, so is it easy? Hell yeah, it's easy. Does it take a lot of work? Oh yeah, it takes a ton of work. So guys, give me a call, 860-266-6411. I'm really rambling here. Um, give me a call, it's I teach one-on-one, -on -one how to do what I do for a living. I've created a curriculum, I'm a landlord first, a coach second, or visit my website at multifamilycoach.com. It's a little bit humble. Or better yet, send me a Facebook message. Uh, happy to have a conversation with you. It's one-on-one, -on -one, but only a couple more students. Uh, and I support my students for the life of their business. I don't charge a lot, but you get everything I have. All my same spreadsheets, forms, strategies. And we go over, we work one-on-one -on -one to get you to the promised land. And that is buying passive, massive income-producing multifamilies. Woo! I'm out of breath. I'm a fat, fat guy and I'm out of breath. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope the holding deposit helps somebody. Try it. I think you'll really like it. I do. Thanks. Bye.